You have arrived to a focal point, the dragon's eye, from where his spirit emanates. The water mirrors the surrounding landscape, doubling it and offering unexpected perspectives, playing with the light and the water lilies on the bottom. Let's not forget that the art of special effects in gardens was in constant dialogue with a stage-like setting, and they fed off each other. The dark gallery, which led to the upper floor of the villa, complemented this offering to light. It is possible that the architect drew inspiration from an 18th century drawing by Francesco Muttoni, used for Villa Fracanzani di Orgiano, where a similar tunnel runs underneath the pavement and emerges into a small open-air theatre. From darkness to light, the underground passage in Sant'Orso brings together the many strands of Antonio Carregaro Negrin's design, giving a sense of completion to the symbolic dimension of architecture and landscape. It seems to touch on the metaphor of the eye, the emblem of Masonic spirituality, very popular with Vicenza cultural elite between the 18th and 19th century. The round shape of the white Belvedere looks like an iris, while the landscape is mirrored on the pond. The water meets the sun's fire, the wind's breath and the earth's dust, all joined in a cheerful dance. It's almost like a rite of passage. Reaching the pupil, the park's cognitive and emotional center, after crossing the short, dark gallery, has the feel of an unexpected revelation, a rare and precious epiphany of light, both around you and within yourself. Right here, in the eye of the dragon, the aim of Antonio Carregaro Negrin's project becomes apparent and so does the link with Alessandro Rossi's villa and their common vision. In this park, architect Carregaro Negrin brought to life the dream of integrated architecture, the perfect combination of technique, spirituality and aesthetics. It stems from an endless trust in the human intellect, the driving force behind all progress. Grateful to the titan Prometheus for the gift of fire, Humanity frees itself from the yoke of tradition and pursues emancipation as Omo Faber, the working man, who is architect of his own fortune. If it's the right season, the inebriating scent of Osmanthus will envelop you. But where is it coming from?